Hello first learners, welcome to our YouTube channel where we bring knowledge closer to you by just a single click button. My name is Katere Gajams and I will be taking you through phone repractice. So when it comes to phone repractice, we are going to look at tools and equipment used in phone practice. So there are different types of phone and casting tools or equipment used in phone shops. And these tools are used for carrying out different operations. Such operations may include sand preparation, we use certain tools. There is powering, we use certain tools. There is molding, we use certain tools, as well as casting. So these 400 tools are classified into two. We have hand tools, we have conditioning tools. So, and among these tools, we have things like flasics, we have things like power operated equipment, we have metal melting equipment, we have fettling equipment as well as finishing equipment. So when it comes to sand casting tools, these are mainly used for molding operations. Then when it comes to sand conditioning tools, these are basically used for preparing different types of casting sands. Remember, last time we looked at different casting sands where we looked at loam sand, we looked at coarse sand, we looked at green sand, we looked at different sands. So, conditioning tools are used for preparing those different casting tools. We are going to also look at flasics whereby they are used for creating the moldy cavity whereby if the pattern is withdrawn, that is the use of the flask. Then we are going to look at these different types of casting tools. And one of them, the different tools we are going to look at, we have what we call a hand riddle. A hand riddle is used for cleaning sand. Clean sand in such a way that we are using this riddle in order to separate sand and other objects that serve as obstacles when it comes to molding. Such objects or such obstacles may be things like nails, they might be splinters of wood, they might be short metals. So these are obstacles. So we remove them by use of what we call a hand riddle. A hand riddle consists of what we call a circular wide wire mesh equipment with a circular frame, as you can see. Then we have another tool known as the shovel. So when it comes to the shovel, what you commonly refer to as a sped. So this consists of what we call a customized sheet metal or a steel pan with a wooden handle. You all know spades. Therefore, though when it comes to foundry technology, we refer to it as a shovel. So it is used for removing, it can be used for moving as well as transferring the molding sand into the container. It can be in the container, it can be in the molding box or a flask. So they are basically used for mixing, tempering and conditioning of the foundry sand by hand. So that is the shovel. Then we have what we call a rama. A rama has types. We have what we call a hand rama. We have a pin rama. We have a floor rama. We have a pneumatic rama. So we are going to look into details these different ramas. Basically, a rama is used for repairing or arranging the mold sand that loses from the mold. That is the major use of the rama. It can also be used for packing or compacting sand uniformly around the pattern. That is the use of the rama. So what are these different types of ramas and their uses? We have a hand rama. A hand rama is basically made of wood or metal and it is usually portable and at one end it carries what we call a wedge type construction. So it is basically used for ramming the sand in bench molding work, that is the hand rama. Then we have what we call a pin rama. A pin rama is used for packing the molding sand in packets and corners, that is the use. It also has a wedge shaped construction with a metallic rod at the bottom, that is the pin rama. Then we have a floor rama. So a floor rama is made in such a way that it is heavy and has layers which are compared with the hand rama. It's compared to a hand rama. So it consists of long steel bar with a pin at one end and the float portion on the other. That is a, a floor rama. It is basically used for floor molding, for ramming sand for larger molds. Then you have what you call a pneumatic rama. When it comes to a pneumatic rama, it is also 
used for compacting sands like any other ramas only that this time round it is different in shape so it is as work because it is easier to use that is the pneumatic rama then we have another tool referred to as a sprue pin a sprue pin what it does basically produces what we call a vertical hole in the sand casting it is usually made of wood like you can see it can be metal or it can be either even a tapered rod so it is pushed into the cup remember the cup is the top part of the flask in order to join the moldy cavity and produce what you call a cylindrical or a conical shape in the molding sun that is the sprue pin then we have what we call a strike of bar not a strike of bar it's a strike of bar it is made of iron or wood this specifically is used for removing or striking off excess sand from the top of the molding box it is made of a flat bar having a straight edge that is the strike off bar then you have what you call a mallet a mallet is very common it is used for driving the draw spike into the pattern used for wrapping to easily separate the mold from the pattern so whenever we want to try to withdraw the pattern from the mold in order to create a moldy cavity we use what we call a mallet together with the draw spike in order to remove the pattern leaving the moldy cavity without damaging the surface that is the mallet a draw spike this time now now it is done that is driven into the pattern with the help of the mallet I'm getting it that is the draw spike so the draw spike goes in hand with the mallet in order to withdraw the pattern from the moldy cavity then you have what you call a vent rod like it says vent rod that means you are going to create vents so it is used after utilizing what is called what we call ramming after you have rammed and striking off excess sand to produce a series of small holes you need to use a vent rod so a vent rod it is used to create hollow pierces around the moldy cavity such that it can it can permit what you call escape of steam and gases produced during the pouring of the molten metal it also is a solidification to take place of the molten metal that is the vent rod then you have what you call a lifter a lifter can also be referred to as a cleaner all finishing tool a lifter specifically a standard lifter is used for cleaning it can be used for repairing it can be used for finishing the bottom or sides of the deep narrow opening of the moldy cavity that is the lifter then you have the travels though these ones are not very common with us but they are used for finishing flat surface and joints and parting lines of the mold it can also be used in guts and repairs of the moldy surfaces those are the travels then you have the slick slick so the slick slick specifically they are used for repairing and finishing of the moldy surfaces and their edges so this one is usually used after the withdrawal of the pattern so we have different types of slicks we have the heart and the leaf we have the square and the heart we have the spoon and the bead so those are the different types of the slick slick we may also have the hard spoon so that is also a type of the slick then we have what we call a smother what is a smother so a smother is usually used for repairing and finishing flat and round surfaces these surfaces may be round so they may be square they might be corners square corners they can be edges so we use a smother in order to repair all finish these sections then you have what we call swabs swabs it is usually a small hemp fiber or brush it can be used for moistening the edges of the sand metal surfaces and the pattern so it can also be used for coating the liquid blackening or the liquid blacking on the moldy faces in the dry sandy modes that is the what that is the swabs then you have what you call a spirit level a spirit level this is specifically used by the molder to check whether the sand bed or the molding box or the molding box or the flask is in the horizontal or not so you use the spirit level to test for horizontal horizontal tenderness of the moldy box so that is the spirit level then we have what you call a gate cutter when it comes to the gate cutter this is usually used for cutting runners it is used for feeding gates for connecting the sprue holes with the moldy 
cavity. Remember when we are preparing our moldy cavity, we need to create what we call runners. The runners will be passage for molten metal towards the moldy cavity. Then the gates will be where molten metal will be poured in order to pass through the runners into the moldy cavity. So we use the gate cutter in order to create that connecting section where molten metal will flow into the moldy cavity. Then we have the daggers. So the daggers, they are usually made of pieces of wire or rods bent at one or both ends. So these are specifically used for reinforcing the downward projecting sand mass in the cup. So those are the daggers. Then lastly, we shall look at the bellows. B-E-L-L-O-W-S. These ones are specifically used for blowing away loose or unwanted sand from the surfaces of the moldy cavity. So it has what we call a nozzle. It has the entrance for the air and the valve. So the valve, when you try to squeeze the handles, the valve will close. When you try to open the windows wide, that will be entrance for air. So that is the operation of the bellows. So it is used to blow out. It can be used for removing unwanted sand from the surfaces of the moldy cavity. Then lastly, we shall look at the clamp, the cutters, and the wedges. So all these three, they are used specifically for clamping the mold boxes firmly during powering. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. Don't forget to comment where necessary. We shall meet once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.